Okay, this is lesson seven for eighth grade, and today we're talking about averages and rates, um, measures of central tendency. So we'll get into that here. Uh, basically, a rate is a division relationship between two measures, and we usually express it as a rate, a unit rate, uh, which means the second measure is one. All right, so. What they mean by that is if we say 65 miles per hour, that's the same thing as saying 65 miles in one hour. So the second, the second measure is one, and our first measure is whatever uh, 65, so in this case it's 65 miles per hour. So here it'd be 24 miles per one gallon. 32 feet per one second, and, or 15 cents per one ounce. So that'll be something that we want to keep in mind here. Um, it shows us here a few different ways to um, involve our two units here. Um, if we want to solve for the number of miles, say, for 65 miles per hour, we'll take however many hours we've been driving multiply that by 65, we'll get our total number of miles driven. And that goes for uh, gallons, seconds, ounces too. So um, it's a little more easy to see once we jump into a problem. So first one here, uh, driving at an average speed of 55 miles per hour, about how far will the, drive, or will the driver travel in six hours? Okay, well, we're gonna have to go back to the fact that we know that our second rate is one, so it takes us one hour to go 55 miles. Now, if we're not really sure where to go from here, we could always just climb up. Okay, how far is it gonna go in two hours? Well, if it goes 55 miles in one hour, it's going to go twice as far in two hours, so that'd be 55 times 2, 110. We could do that for three hours as well. In three hours, we will get three times 55 miles. But let's just save ourselves some time. We should see a pattern now. And in six hours, it'll just be six times 55. That'll be how many miles that we would get. So, um, let's erase this here. That's a way to think about it, and if you need to go about it that way, that's fine, but this will save you some time and effort. 55, oops, times six, should give us our answer. 30, 33, so 330 miles. So that is our first one there. Number two, Heather finished the 100 kilometer bike race in four hours. What was her average speed in kilometers per hour? Now they're asking us for an average. Average speed it happens to be. Now whenever they ask you for an average, you should know something should go on in your head that says, okay, I'm gonna have to be dividing at some point because that's what average means. You're gonna average almost like when we find the mean of something, which we'll get into. We add up all our numbers and then we divide by how many numbers there were. So, we will be dividing. And the thing is, this actually sets us up. It tells us what's gonna do to the dividing. We want kilometers per hour. So, 100 kilometers divided by however many hours there were, which is four, and we should get 25 kilometers per hour. So, that actually sets us up. Per usually means we're dividing, and kilometers per hour, divide 100 by four, get our 25 kilometers per hour. Last one here. Traveling at an average rate of 58 miles per hour, about, how long would it take a car to travel 20 miles? 
I circle about because that's a fun thing for math. Um, if they say about, that means you get to round, and it should make the problem a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and say, well, this is pretty close to 60 miles, so I'm going to round it up to 60. Now we have, if we're traveling at 60, 60 miles per hour, and we want to figure out how long it's going to take us to travel 20 minutes. I'm going to erase this and put it up here. So, um, 60 miles per hour. We know that that means 60 miles in one hour. Now we want to figure out um, how long it's going to take us to go 20 miles. So we know in one hour we're going to go 60. Well, we'll set up a little ratio here. We need to know 20 miles. And we want to figure out what our time would be for 20 miles. Well, I'm going to do a little trick here. We also know that one hour is 60 minutes. So I'm going to change this to 60 minutes. And now it makes things a lot easier. We need this ratio to be the same as this. So 60 over 60 is to 20 over 20. So basically 60 divided by 60 is 1. Well, we need this side to be 1, 2, since we set it equal to that side, 20 minutes. We also could across multiply divide. Uh, we had some other options there too. We haven't really gotten into that yet, but that's the way we would set that one up. About 20 minutes to get 58 miles traveling at that speed. And that's about when we rounded. All right, moving on here. Uh, I mentioned mean before. Uh, the same average is the same thing as mean. Um, these two words mean the same thing. And what that means is, is we're going to add up a set of numbers and then divide by how many numbers there are to see what our average or mean is. Oops. All right, it's kind of like this coin situation. Um, if we have 15 coins, uh, we find the average number of coins in each stack is like leveling them. So we want each pile to be the same level. If we add everything up, we get 15, 15 coins, and there are five groups of coins that we want. So average number would be three in each pile. So we can see that here. Um, we don't need to do that and make it that complex here, but if we have four eighth grade classrooms at a school, there are 28, 29, 31, and 32 students in those classrooms. What is the average number of students in eighth grade? Well, one thing you can always do, 28 plus 29 plus 31 plus 32. You're going to add all this up, and when you're done, you'll divide by how many numbers there are, which is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Divide by that. So, we could do that. The answer should be, and I can say this should be 30, because here's what I would do. I'm going to take 2 from here, and I'm going to put it with this 28. That gives us 30. And 30 here. And if I take the 1 here and give it to this 29, I get 30 here and 30 here. That's how I know that that's going to be 30. But if you added all these up and divided by 4, you'd still get 30. <laughs> so that's our average or mean. And two other central measures are median and mode. Uh, median is when we order all the numbers and find the one that's in the middle. So the, the first thing you have to do is put the numbers all in order and then find the one that's in the middle. And mode, mode's the easiest one because mode just means the most frequent number or the one that appears the most. So let's take a look at this real quick. We have a set of numbers here. These are home prices in thousands. We want the average. We want the mean, we want the mode of the data. So first things first, let's do um, the mode. 
So which one of these numbers occurs the most often? Well, I see 175,000 twice. That's our mean, so, or not mean, uh, mode. Mode, 175,000. Okay. Now to find, I won't go through how to do the average. Basically what you'll do is add all these up. There are 12 numbers, so after you add them all up, you'll divide by 12. And you should get your mean. Now, here's how we do our median. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to order these, and I see we've got our lowest number is 170. Cross that out. Our next highest is 175, I believe. And there's two of those. So I'll get rid of those. And then it looks like we've got 181, We need to find the one that's exactly in the middle. So what I'm going to start doing is crossing off from each end and see where we end up. So 170, 219, 175, 209, 175, 208. And we're going to keep going like this. Now, we didn't come to a, an exact central number, but we've got two here, 185 and 187. What do we do in this case? We take the average of those two. So we'll take 185 plus 187 divided by 2, and we should get our central number, but we know that will be 186. That is our median. Right there. I'm going to check my time real quick. We're doing okay. All right. So median, 186,000. Mode. 175,000. Our average should be, once we add up all of these numbers and divide by 12, we should get our average. Um, this solution is in your book if you do want to look at that. One last thing here. Uh, we also can use the range to help us determine some things. The range of a set of data is the difference between the greatest and the least numbers in the set. So if we turn back here, our largest number was 219 and our lowest was 170. So if we go back to our range here, we will subtract those two and we should get our range. That would look like this. 219, 170, subtract those $49,000. So that would be the range of our data. All right, so this was lesson seven for grade eight, and we'll see you next time.